Good evening and welcome back from your weekend. I'm Shay Simon. And I'm Aaliyah Wilkerson. Now to your headlines. The Tallahassee area experienced a slew of power outages yesterday and crews are already out repairing the damage. Outages were reported in the Bradfordville Road area as well as the area of Mikasuki Road. According to the social media accounts for the city, if you live in an area impacted by outages, you can report them by calling 850-891. Four six, I mean, excuse me, four nine six eight. Residents stay in the know of all the repairs via the city of Tallahassee's Twitter account at C O T C zero. Oh, excuse me, C O two O T news. That is at the sign city of Tallahassee. Cot news on Twitter. <laughs> A little off today, FAMU DRS reopened today following a reported case of hand, foot and mouth disease. Officials from the school said the school was closed from Thursday through the weekend as a precaution. Though the virus is not deadly, it is easily spread through the touching of doorknobs and other forms of contact. The school finished its cleaning process yesterday and students returned this morning at 8 a.m. Parents are asked to watch for symptoms in their children and report all serious illnesses. Tallahassee police will be testing body cams for the next 30 days, according to the department. TPD received a two-year $675,000 Department of Justice grant to purchase up to 450 body cameras. The city commission will match those funds in addition to another $125,000. The announcement comes amongst concerns about public and police relations nationwide. And we have more updates. Brea Hollingsworth has the latest on the unrelated arrest of one of the men charged in the case. Brea, what do we know? Well, Shay Clayton Muelsty, one of the suspects in the hazing death of Andrew Coffey, is now back in jail. Muelsty's bond was provoked following a drunken nightclub fight last week. Muelsty turned himself in on Friday after a warrant was issued out for his arrest. His attorney requested a motion hearing, which will take place on this coming Wednesday. Live in the studio, I'm Brea Hollingsworth. Back to you. Thank you for that, Brea. And that's all in continuing coverage. We will continue and follow this story as it develops. The recent Cambridge Analytica scandal involving Facebook's privacy breach has Tallahassee Facebook users wondering what to do next. I spoke with some Tallahassians and information technology specialists to answer the questions we all want to know. What is next? I've prepared a special report on the matter, and here it is. The private messages and shopping locations people send and even just posting a relationship status are a few elements of the Facebook profile that was leaked in the recent Cambridge Analytica data breach. According to a report published in January by We Are Social, there are more than 2.1 billion active Facebook users. Facebook chairman and chief operating officer Mark Zuckerberg stated in a recent testimony, 87 million of Facebook Facebook users' personal data was compromised. Chief Information Security Officer at Florida A&M University, Clifford Stokes Jr., says the UK-based data collection service hired by Facebook collects and stores personal data, giving hackers the ability to easily guess passwords. Like uh, you might notice, you might walk into a Joann's Fabric store and all of a sudden a coupon pops up on your phone or you get a text message because the, the GPS has located you in a Joann's Fabric Store and a Facebook application or one of the applications affiliated with Facebook might know that you like to crochet or you do certain, you know, art, artistic type things. Well, those things will match up and Joann's Fabric will automatically send you coupons to get discounts because they have farmed your data and your information. According to avid Facebook user Charles Robinson, regardless of the breach, it will not stop him from connecting with family and friends via the popular social media site. I will continue to use Facebook until something else comes along. Um, it's not a bad site. It's just, you know, for people to get information or invade my privacy, I don't, 
I have a problem with that. Stokes plans to stay prepared. If something is going to happen, it's when, when it's going to happen and what we've done to prepare ourselves. Mm -hmm. So we, you know, we put certain things in place and we're still building out our program. Mm -hmm. So uh, soft controls, making sure uh, our users, which are staff, our faculty, students are aware of when they go to these certain sites. These are the type of things that you could be in jeopardy of. Mm -hmm. uh, in order to not let a data breach be your testimony of defeat, Read the terms and agreements and plan to protect your personal information needs. According to Chief Information Security Officer Stokes, the question isn't whether or not the breach will happen again. It's a matter of how companies bounce back. FAMU and FSU students organized a march against sexual assault that was held this past Friday. FAMU students marched from the eternal flame while FSU students began their march at the Westcott statue. Both groups, along with some participants from TCC, met at Doug Burnett Park on Gang Street. There are testimonies from survivors of sexual assault and domestic violence. The Dog Black Cafe and, Cafe and Gang Street Pies sponsored the event and donated food and drinks. Directly after the Take Back the Night March, a survivor support circle was held. Professional counselors on site offered help to those still recovering. And college students in Tallahassee had a pretty busy weekend the day after some FAMU and FSU students took back the night. Other collegiates met with Democratic Senators Bill Nelson and Cory Booker. They discussed some hot political topics like the airstrikes against Syria and foreign relations with Russia. They also asked students what they were concerned about regarding politics and addressed those issues. FSU College Democrats, FSU, FAMU's Electoral Commissioner and SGA President, the 112th Miss FAMU and members of other student organizations were in attendance at the meet and greet and they enjoyed the one-on-one -on -one time they got with the senators. And we have an update on the Tallahassee police officer who shot and killed a family dog. Digital journalist Belinda J. Wesley has the update. And I look at him and ask him, what are you doing? Why did you shoot my dog? Um, you know, he just had a shook, scared look on his face like he didn't know what he just did. That's a portion of the conversation Orion Raybon had with a police officer right before he broke the news to his daughters that their family dog, Callie, died. I'm holding her in my, my arms and asking her, why, why are you even here? What are you doing? Um, you know, he, he basically had a shook look on his face. Raybon told News 20 he had a disagreement with his neighbor, which led to 911 being called and his 12-year-old dog being shot five times. Raybon said he was told the dog was being aggressive with an officer. We really don't believe that the dog attacked the officer or charged the officer. This was a well-trained, well-behaved, mild-mannered Rottweiler. Raybon says due to the severity of the injuries, the dog was euthanized. Raybon says there's no official police record of what happened, so he contacted his attorney and filed a citizen report. Where TPD can just come on your property unannounced and shoot your family dog for no reason, especially a dog at that age. This has been very traumatizing to me. News 20 contacted Tallahassee Police Department regarding this incident. We were told it's still under investigation and there are no new updates as of now in Tallahassee. Belinda J. Wesley, News 20. We will continue to follow this story further. Welcome back and thanks for sticking with us. Police in Texas are investigating after a man threatened a local college. Investigators say Sean Haddon told a dispatcher that he put a pipe bomb in the lobby of the university police department. They say he even warned the university's HR that he was going to shoot at least 200 people on campus. The scare comes after a scattering of bombings in Austin last month that left the state on edge. Haddon is now in custody and just another reminder to always be on the lookout for anything suspicious. Seven inmates have been killed and at least 17 others have been injured amid fighting between prisoners in a South Carolina prison. The fight started around 7.15 p.m. and wasn't contained until 2.55 a.m., a prison spokesperson added. No officers were injured, said communications director, and the prison is located 55 miles east of Columbia, housing over 1,000 of South Carolina's most violent offenders.
And just this weird feeling, the chill here, so are the people in California. Snow returned to the Sierra over the weekend, and with it, hazardous road conditions in the mountains. Local authorities said many drivers were caught off guard, causing several accidents, occurring after the driver lost control while traveling westbound on Interstate 80, launching past a guardrail, losing pieces of his cars, and landing roughly 30 feet below on the side of the road. This is just one of the many unusual weather trends happening across the country, and we'll have more on that later. I'm Angelicia Bruton with your international headlines. We are seeing new video of Saturday's airstrikes by U.S. Armed Forces against Syria. The Navy released this video Monday. It shows the USS Laboon firing a Tomahawk land attack missile. The guided missile destroyer was deployed to the U.S. 5th Fleet area of operations in the Red Sea. It took part in strikes targeting the chemical weapons facilities maintained by the regime of Syrian President Bashar al-Assad. The destroyer fired seven missiles. In all, the Pentagon says 105 missiles were launched against Syria. The United States, the United Kingdom, and France are pushing for an end to Syria's chemical weapons program after a wave of missile strikes. The UK accuses Russia and Syria of blocking the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons from access to Douma in Syria. That's where the Assad regime was accused of launching a gas attack earlier this month. The attack was cited by the US, UK, and France as the basis for airstrikes on regime targets in Syria on Saturday. A community in Afghanistan has agreed to create a new literacy center where nearly 50 young women are learning to read and write. The change comes as those displaced by war are making the trek back home. Access to education is still a struggle for most women in Afghanistan. However, this is a move in the right direction of equality. Local police say on Sunday over 300,000 supporters of Catalonia independence took to the streets of Barcelona. With signs saying freedom and liberty, the protesters demanded that their political leaders be released from prison. Several elected representatives were in prison in October of 2017 from the, for the crime of rebellion after a failed referendum to have Catalonia break away from Spain. That was your international news. I'm Angelicia Bruton for Bruton's Brew. Now to Michaela with Eli. Good afternoon and welcome to Eat Live. I'm Michaela Sherman with your entertainment news. Let's jump right in. Adult film actress Stormy Daniels will attend a court hearing in New York on Monday for U.S. President Donald Trump's personal lawyer, Michael Cohen. Daniels' lawyer said on Sunday, Daniels is engaged in a legal battle with Cohen over a $130,000 agreement to keep her quiet about a 2006 sexual encounter she said she had with Trump. The agreement was reached just before the 2016 presidential election. Cohen is due in Manhattan federal court as part of a criminal investigation largely related to his business practices. All right, now for our five-day forecast. Tuesday, we'll be expecting some sunny skies, high of 76, low of 53. Wednesday, also, it'll be sunny, a high of 84 and a low of 59. Thursday, partly cloudy skies, high of 81, low of 52. Friday, sunny skies, high of 77, low of 52. And Saturday, mostly cloudy skies, high of 80, low of 59. That's it for your weather report. We'll be right back after this break. Florida State held its annual spring game on Saturday and fans showed up and packed the house. The Garden and Gold game had a regular season atmosphere with 60,000 plus fans in attendance. The Knowles debuted Willie Taggart's up-tempo office, running a grand total of 85 plays in the first half and finishing the game with 125. The playoff season has just begun and so far the games have been tight. Yesterday we saw a bunch of close games with the Celtics defeating the Bucks 113-107, the T-Wolves taking on the Rockets with a small win of three points in a game that resulted in a 104-101 win. The Pacers also beat the Cavs 98-10. 80 and the Thunder narrowly beat the Jazz by 8 points. Today we're looking forward to the Heat and 76ers game as well as the Spurs Warriors game. That's all I have for the sports right now. We'll be right back after the break. <laughs> well that's going to do it for us tonight. For Brandon and Kayla, I'm Shay Simon. And I'm Aaliyah Wilkerson. Thanks for watching and remember to also follow us on thefamuyun.com. Have a great evening.